Welcome to Fredericksburg Mission, a podcast talking all things mental health and wellness in the Berg, brought to you by... How do you shorten the time it takes to buy a car? Car buying just got easier. Pohanka365.com lets you complete as much or as little of the car buying process online. Pohanka365.com, car buying simplified. Anytime, anywhere. Welcome to Fredericksburg Mission. My name is Angela Rivers, and today I'm here with Zoe Jackson, a yoga extraordinaire, a published author, and the owner of 3H Yoga Foundation. Welcome. Hello, Angela. So great to be here today. Yes, thank you so much for joining me. I'm so excited to talk about what you do and all that you do in the community. Yes, I am as well. Yes. So let's begin today's podcast by just breaking it down for our listeners and telling them what exactly yoga is and how is it different from meditation? Okay. Well, yoga is simply put breath to movement. It is the action of putting breath to movement as you are going through your yoga poses. Meditation, however, is the full concentration, not not using any movement or a minimal amount of movement, such as the movement of your eyes, um, but you're focused on your breathing and you're focused on a specific emotion, person, place, or thing that will help you to come to reach the point of relaxation, total relaxation. Yeah. And with yoga, though, I mean, do you focus on an object as well or just on your breathing? Well, in yoga, you are focused on your breathing and how that breathing helps you to get into and out of your yoga position. So not necessarily focused on anything or anyone, but just the movement that you're doing as you're going in and out of the poses. So you breathe with the poses? Correct. Okay. So for example, if I'm going into uh, a movement where I'm using my hands to Mm -hmm. dasana. So inhale, bring your arms up. Exhale, bring them down in prayer. That's a good example. Inhale, exhale. So you can inhale either through your nose or your mouth and you exhale as well. Okay. You know, I've taken yoga before and not every teacher teaches it like that. Oh, really? Is there a reason why they might not explain about the breathing? Or do they just assume that you already know, maybe? It is really, um, I would say that it's based on where they were taught Mm -hmm. or what school of yoga they were uh, received their certification, teacher certification from. Um, I received my certification uh, back in 2007, or actually 2011, sorry. And it was through Core Power Yoga in Chicago. Mm. Uh, And that's when I learned about the different breaths, which are also called asanas, as well as movement. And so that's the way that my instructor, or my yogi instructor Mm -hmm. taught me, um, just make it simple, basic and plain, breath to movement. And how did you get into yoga? Oh, boy. Do we have enough time? (laughs) We do. Well, I initially got into yoga as a college student while enrolled in Army ROTC. Yes. (laughs) Army ROTC, the girl in me. Uh, It was something that actually my dad wanted me to do. And I didn't do it my freshman year. I actually waited until my junior year. Uh, And I enrolled on my own and I enrolled because I wanted to have a job, a guaranteed job after I graduated. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to do something that was going to not only help me, but help others as well. So serving my country and giving back to, you know, all all things related to Americans. Yeah. Yeah. And then, so from there, I mean, 
what was the transition like? How long were you in the military? You know, what was that like? Well, I served in the military for a total of 23 years. 23 years, uh, both active, reserve, and guard. Reserve means that I do it part-time, one weekend a month. Uh, and also in the National Guard, that means that I, I served specifically for a state. So for the state of Illinois, I served in the National Guard, as well as the state of Virginia. Uh, while on active duty, though, I served in Germany, and then as active guard reserve, that's also active, mm -hmm. but in a reserve, it, it's, re, it's a reservist on an active duty status. That is, um, I was able to serve at Georgetown University. Mm -hmm. I was able to serve at um, a unit in Iowa, also come back home and serve at a unit there. Um, I, what I want to say is that being in the military really, really prepared me for anything, including being a yoga instructor. Um, but my journey uh, to finding yoga and making it my own and making it a lifestyle actually uh, began when I um, went through a very challenging and traumatic time in my life. Um, due to stress and uh, really just working, oh, being overworked yeah. and not really doing self-care. Yeah. Um, I became a diabetic. I became a type 2 diabetic. Uh, and then uh, in 2015, I became a type 1 diabetic. And with that diagnosis came another complication called gastroparesis. Uh, and gastroparesis is the is the is the breakdown of the body, specifically the nerve the nerve system the nervous system. And so I had damaged nerve in, nerves in my stomach, uh, and so that caused me to not be able to digest food. So um, I suffered from that for quite a long time before being medically evacuated to Walter Reed National Military Medical Center, which is where I spent two years in recovery as a wounded warrior. And basically my job was to get well. Mm -hmm. um, I was seen by various specialists um, to include a podiatrist for my feet because but diabetes affects nerves in your feet, mm -hmm. your hands, rheumatology, um, extremes amount an extreme amount of pain. Um, so pain doc doctors who treated me for pain, pain management, um, you name it, mm -hmm. I saw that uh, specialist. Yeah. But what I can say is that I was able to heal. And one of the reasons why I was able to heal is because of my yoga practice. Yeah, and you know, I think that probably also helps you stay healing now, you know, with the continuation of yoga. Most definitely. Um, once I was um, retired from the, from the military, I retired out of Walter Reed in December of 2018, uh, I continued to practice yoga. I continued to uh, see a yoga therapist, and that's a that is a licensed person who does yoga with you, shows you the poses, tells you the benefit of the poses, and actually leads you through meditation. Uh, that was a great experience, uh, and then I became a yoga instructor here locally, working at Gold's Gym, mm -hmm. uh, and then I started teaching. Uh, just to individual clients and small groups who requested them, uh, which is what I do now. And do you remember your first class, I mean, that you took? Or was there really a moment where you're like, oh, I want to go to a yoga class? Like, do you remember that? Because it doesn't just happen overnight. Well, um, I will say that it all, I was introduced to yoga as a college student uh, in Army ROTC. Um, 
there was an instructor who came and took us through a yoga session, the yoga poses, but they were mainly used to get us ready for the run. So there were stretching poses, really. Um, and then we started doing it, doing those stretches every day, mm -hmm. uh, every day that we would get ready for a run, every day when we would come back from a run. And then I started doing it on my own. Uh, I started going to Pilates classes on campus. Uh, I really didn't start doing yoga classes mm -hmm. until I was introduced to um, gentle yoga by one of my professors okay. uh, who practiced yoga daily. Um, I write about, I actually talk about that in my first book. Mm -hmm. um, and then I really didn't get serious about yoga and uh, incorporate it into my daily lifestyle, which I call a yogic lifestyle, mm -hmm. until I wanted to see a change in my body and in my mind. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's probably around what I call the midlife crises age. Uh, for me, it was age 40 or right, right before age 40. Um, hey, you said 23 years in the military, and I'm looking at you thinking, really? <laughs> well, people say I look young for my age. <laughs> I would say so. <laughs> but definitely living a yogic lifestyle, you, you, you may want to know what that means to me. Yeah. You live in a yoga -like lifestyle is actually consistently doing yoga uh, within your limitations, of course. So that means that you can wake up and breathe and move doing your yoga poses. You can go to sleep doing your yoga poses. Throughout the day, you can sit in your chair and do chair yoga. That's one way. Mm -hmm. Another way is by actually incorporating yoga thinking. So having that mindset, a positive mindset in everything that you do and knowing that <coughs> you manifest and whatever you say, you manifest and it becomes your reality. And so for me, I speak joy, I speak light, and I speak positively, positivity, both in my life and in, in, in the life, uh, lives of others. And I often, you know, hear about other people with certain struggles and things that they go on in their, that go on in their life. And you have to see the positive after experiences like that. Yes. Uh, for me, it's all about um, self-care, mm -hmm. giving myself positive affirmations as well as others. Um, and self-care for me goes more than just getting my hair done, nails mm -hmm. done, um, feet done, going to get a massage, but actually putting myself in places, spaces, and being among the faces that bring the love and the light to mm -hmm. others. Um, and so that may include going on a retreat. That may include just sitting outside, embracing the sunlight and embracing the calmness and embracing those wonderful things around you, such as nature, birds singing, um, the, the sound of air blowing. I mean, all of those things and just having a pre an appreciation for where you are and being in the moment. Yeah, and being present. Yes, being yeah. present and in the moment and appreciating that, mm -hmm. having gratitude for that and being thankful that you're alive. And for me, with all that I've been through, yeah. I am very grateful and thankful to be alive and to be able to be here um, and share my passion with mm -hmm. the world. Yeah, you have to. I mean, I was sick for a long time. A lot okay. of people know. And so that experience made me who I am today. And it's like, uh, it's a turning point, you know, like with you, it's a turning point and you wouldn't, you know, every, every single issue or every single thing that happens in your life, it's a journey yes. and it brings you to where you are today. Yes. Uh, which brings me to my first book. Yes. Let's talk about <laughs> it. So journey, journey to Yogi Fine Fit. Yes. Yes. And so this is my first book. Um, it actually is the journey that I just talked about, my time throughout the military and the various things and challenges that I faced uh, and, I, and the use of yoga to get through those challenges. And so 
um, it talks about how I got into running, how I uh, was a bodybuilder and competed in competitions, bodybuilding huh, competitions. Really? It talks about I me. I almost did that. Yeah. Oh, it, it's wonderful. It's a wonderful <laughs> experience. It, <laughs> it beats plastic surgery, that's for sure. <laughs> um, I was a Zumba instructor. Um, I mean, it talks about all of that. And, and it ends with uh, the way that I give back. Uh, mm -hmm. And it also includes a second portion of the book, which actually has 25, 30, 30 yoga poses. Uh, and, it, and it has uh, the benefits of those poses and how those poses helped me to heal. That's really nice that it talks about the benefits, too. Again, something every yoga instructor that I've ever been to has not said. They just say, pose here and breathe or pose here and... You know, that's really nice because what if you're going through something? Correct. You know, and then this pose can help you overcome it. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. I think that throughout my training, and I've had several trainings through core mm -hmm. power yoga, uh, general yoga, restorative yoga, adaptive yoga, where you actually um, uh, do the modifications, you teach the modifications of a different pose. So if there's someone who has trouble standing, mm -hmm. you do the yoga poses in this chair, you demonstrate those poses, how to get into the pose, how to get out of the pose, the benefit of that pose to a specific body part mm -hmm. and or the way that pose should make you feel. Yeah, and yoga really helped me when I was sick. I was paralyzed for a while. Oh, um, no. A lot of people know my story, but it really helped me. And so mm. it's nice to to hear how it can help other ailments as well. Yes, definitely, mm -hmm. both mentally and physically. It's true, it's true, especially with stress. And nowadays, you know, with the pandemic, and have you seen a lot more people coming to see you um, because they're stressed out or because they just need a moment to self-care? Well, uh, I did own a yoga studio, well, a dance, fitness, and wellness studio called mm -hmm. Z Body LLC, Dance, Fitness, and Wellness Studio. I, uh, I launched that studio in January of 2010. Okay. Uh, but unfortunately, I had to do a military move. And so I just took the business with me and it became a virtual business. Way That's back so then. Yeah. Uh, and so I would have clients. I didn't have a lot of clients because I also taught at the local gym mm -hmm. wherever I was stationed in the military. Um, but now uh, it is it is difficult um, to maintain clients because of COVID. Um, so it's very you have to be it's a delicate situation when you are. Uh, given a yoga class because you not only have to do temperature checks, but you have mm -hmm. to check to make sure they've been vaccinated or have the booster shot now. And then also for myself, mm -hmm. because I um, still suffer from some complications from my diabetes, I have to be very careful mm -hmm. uh, and um, very vigilant in my own self-care. And so right now, I, I have just limited limited my teaching to people that I know um, or various organizations that want me to come out, such as the United Methodist uh, Family Services, yeah. foster care agency, yeah. or and or home schools, for example, here in Fredericksburg, uh, which I do virtual virtual mm -hmm. classes. Um, but yeah, right now. It's all about serving within your limit, within my limitations. Yeah. Let's talk about your foundation for a minute and how you serve our community, your 3-H Yoga Foundation. Um, on here, your mission is to uplift, to engage, and encourage underserved, underprivileged, and underrepresented populations to achieve optimal health and wellness using community-based yoga, meditation, self-image, and you do seminars, and you educate um, through outreach programs. Correct, yeah. correct. And within this community, the Fredericksburg community, I um, have the wonderful opportunity to work with a foster care agency. In fact, um, I am, we are in the beginning stages of planning 
to work with, having me work with uh, the parent support group mm -hmm. uh, and the youth support group for the United Methodist Family Services Foster Care Agency. Um, I'm really excited about that. Again, we're in the planning stages mm -hmm. where I will present not only yoga training through yoga workshops and self-care workshops and meditation and yoga classes, but also I will a be involved in the retreat for the families as well. And so all of this will begin in January. Uh, and so I'm excited to plan with uh, LaToya, yeah. who was on your show last week, I believe. Yeah. I talked with her um, extensively um, and actually, we've known each other for a couple of years now. I met her first through her mom, mm -hmm. who wanted me to provide some yoga services to her church. Uh, and then she introduced me to her daughter because I told her uh, that I was a foster parent. And mm -hmm. she was at the time a caseworker. And now... Uh, she's here we are. <laughs> she, yeah, she's here in, in, a, in a very huge role yeah. uh, at the foster care agency. So um, it's it's a blessing. Uh, and I feel that it is really a great time. So it's one, two things, season, reason, and lifetime. So there's a reason why you do certain things. Uh, and then it becomes the season, your time. And so that's when all these opportunities start presenting themselves. Mm -hmm. And then this, there's the lifetime, the people that come into your life and they become friends for life. Yeah. And yeah. Latoya is one of those people. Yeah, definitely. She's incredible and she meditates and has a big passion for that as well. So it's nice yes. to, to bridge that together. Yes. Yeah. And then you were a foster parent, you mentioned. Yes. How was that? Um, how was that experience? <clears throat> well, my my husband and I, we initially went into foster parenting under the foster under the Fredericksburg Foster to Adopt Foster Care Agency, and I believe it's through social services here in Fredericksburg. And we initially went in because we wanted to adopt, and we knew that if we went through the training, there's a there's a high a possibility that we would receive that opportunity. Mm -hmm. And immediately after training, maybe about a month a month or two after our training, we were presented with the opportunity to have two foster girls. And we have two, at the time we had two teenage boys who were finishing out their high school, their in their last years of high school. And we I had never I was I didn't have any girls. I have lots of nieces, but I just wanted to be a mom of girls. Mm -hmm. There's a difference, you know. There is a difference. Uh, and so we did get that opportunity um, and they were with us for about six months. Um, and unfortunately, we weren't able to adopt, but we really, really wanted to adopt them. Mm -hmm. And it was a wonderful experience. You know, it's it's a very humbling experience. Uh, it teaches you a lot about your own patience, about... Parenting uh, does in general. Yes. <laughs> I think that being a foster parent actually made us better parents, better people in general, mm -hmm. um, because we there was a, a certain amount of compassion, a certain amount of um, forgiveness, a certain amount of acceptance. Uh, all of those things... Uh, that we learn through our foster care training, mm -hmm. foster parent training, as well as through experience, tried and true, <laughs> uh, with our foster children, um, it made us become better parents. And we were able to foster for almost three years. So we had uh, three sets of siblings. Mm -hmm. Actually, uh, like I said, the two twin foster girls, love them. We actually had three other children who were three, four, and seven, a sibling group. And then we, we also had a teenager, a teenage boy, age 17, age 16, who turned 17 with us. And so all different age groups, yeah. um, and we enjoyed every minute of it. Do you miss it? 
I do, because you become so attached. Mm -hmm. And you know, the goal of foster, of kids being in foster care is to return home. And when their parents um, aren't able mm -hmm. and they've, in the um, agency has, uh, you know, tried to reach out to families and the, their family members, and they're not, a, just, they're just not able to make that connect, then um, either the parent loses their parental rights, mm -hmm. and then, then you come into the adoption, being able to adopt. Um, unfortunately, that did not happen for us because our kids were returned back to their parents mm -hmm. or returned back to their sibling group who was in another home because um, at the time we were only prepared to take two children and they were actually part of a sibling group of five. And so they were actually separated in three different homes mm. uh, and they were able to put them in one, ho one home. That's good. Um, but yes, I, I loved it so much in, so much that I wrote a book about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And this is, oh, I can't wait to have my daughter read this. Yoga with my foster mom. I just love that. Yes. This is my second book. And it and it, it, it is actually um, about my experience. So it is nonfiction as a foster mom. And uh, the purpose of the book is not only to show parents that, um, that, they can use yoga as a way to spend quality time with their children or introduce them to a new form of health and wellness. Wow. But it also serves as a representation allowing foster children to see themselves in a positive light, mm -hmm. doing something that will promote um, better, um, better control of their emotions, yeah. better control of their breathing, better control of themselves as uh, they self-manage, as, as they um, aim to self-manage themselves and their behavior. Yeah, help them keep, stay balanced and, you know, reduce the anxiety or the panic attacks or the, help reduce the trauma. Yes, yeah. all of that, yeah. all of that. And so uh, as part of my, um, 3H Yoga Foundation, we we provide not only training for the mentors that the agency has, or we will provide mentors for the agency who are trained to do yoga with a child. But we, like I said, we also provide workshops and training to other organizations who may want to provide yoga classes or um, yoga and self-care workshops, yoga and nutrition workshops, yoga and wellness, yoga mm -hmm. and self-care. So um, it is truly a blessing to be able to share my talents and skills and knowledge with not only foster children, foster parents, but also with anyone who yeah who serves in the community and wants to have an impact on a specific group. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it could be Girl Scouts or Boy Scouts or schools or, you know, the food co-op or yes. anything in the community that wants to to have those services. Yes, which is and, great. and we are willing and we are ready. Yeah. Um, and so if they want, um, please reach out. We, yeah. are, we are in desperate need of mentors right now. Um, and then I have a couple of ladies who work with me um, who are in training now uh, to to become mentors. That's great. That's so great. And then not only that, but you had some big news uh, come up this week about a possible TV show. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, it is your season. So I talk about reason, season, and lifetime. Yeah. And so for me, this is a season, a huge, lots of opportunities that are presenting themselves. And I am ready mm -hmm. based on everything that I've gone through. Yeah. Um, and I actually have a background in public relations because that's what I did for the military okay. for a very long time. So I was the person who told the stories of the military service members and their families. I was the person who edited a, 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 
a new magazine for my command. I was that person who wrote the speeches for my general officers mm -hmm. who went and presented at Veterans Day um, activities yeah. and events. And so I was presented with the opportunity to have my very own so talk show on Fox 5 Plus. And we start taping this Saturday. It's gonna be great. The name of the show is actually named after my card deck. Oh, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. That card deck I brought. Uh, happy Healthy Healing? Yes, yes, Happy Healthy Healing Yoga. I think it's right here, right nope, here. Nope, right there, the green one, yes. And you have the cards in your hand. Yeah. Uh, and those cards are actually, uh, to promote, used to promote yoga uh, in the schools, as well as at home with parents who are working with their children now, especially in light of COVID. And so I won't give too much away about the show. No, because people I, have to tune in. That's right. <laughs> I want you to tune in. It won't air until um, December. So it'll. I'll have my first show during the holidays. Oh, that's so great. And so I will tell you this. You will be amazed. Uh, you will be educated, informed, empowered, and inspired. And that's all that I can say. <laughs> Happy Healing Healthy Yoga is the name of my show. And when it launches, can people find it? Will you post it on Facebook? Will they find it through a website? Yes. So I have various forms of social media. <laughs> Uh, but I will definitely have a YouTube page and right now that is in the works. And so right now I have two websites or web pages, one called Z Body LLC, which is the yoga entrepreneur extraordinaire page <laughs> that showcases my yoga business as a for-profit and you can purchase all of my books, as well as my flashcards, and we have t-shirts and <coughs> a mask, which I gave yes. to you as a gift today. And um, yes, <laughs> and that in on that website, you can also learn about my nonprofit as well. The other page that I have, web page that I have, is an author web page, and so on that web page, you will find all of my books my bio, book reviews, book events that I am doing where you can find me, such as the book fair or the book festival that took place last weekend. Mm -hmm. Pictures from that event are there. Um, and also, if you want to request me to come to be a local author or a speaker at any of your events showcasing any of my books. Yeah. And can they also, um find you on those pages to sign up for you to come teach like a, a yoga class or or anything of like say a Girl Scout troop wants to reach out. Yes. So that is where they would again do the request okay. for a visit. Okay. Um but I also have a sub subscription page and a I guess a contact page. So I prefer that um, if, if someone wants to do yoga with me, that they send me an email because it is, it is a private session. Um, it could be one-on-one, -on -one, small group of no more than three to five people. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's what I'm doing right now. Uh, and if they want it in person, of course, I have to do all those checks mm -hmm. for COVID uh, and temperature. Yeah. And, uh, but normally, uh, it's uh, virtual right now. Okay. And you wear, you know, you wear so many hats. Um, but I asked this question to everyone. Um, I probably already know the answer to it, but I would love to hear yours. At UMFS, we value our foster families. We value our community, our children, our teens, our staff as being unwavering champions. How are you an unwavering champion? Well, first... I think first I'll just define what an, an what an unwavering champion means to me, mm -hmm. um, and and being someone of a military background, I believe in loyalty, 
respect, honesty, discipline, and consistency in whatever you do Mm -hmm. and displaying good character and sharing your passion not only with the people that you love or the people that are close to you, but also being able to teach and reach others outside of that circle. And so for me, um, giving back, not only through my nonprofit, but just being that person who be- strongly believes that you do onto others as you want done to yourself. Mm-hmm. For me, it's spreading positivity. It's always giving a compliment. It's always affirming, not only myself, but others as well. Um, Because you only live once. And so why be downtrodden, negative? The energy that you give is the energy that you receive. And I'm a strong believer of manifestation as well. Mm -hmm. Manifesting what you say can either, either hurt, harm, kill, destroy, or grow, prosper, develop into what you strongly love and desire. Mm -hmm. And so that for me, just being in that role, having an opportunity to be a leader in the community and sharing what I love is what an Unwavering Champion is. Well, that is a good way to end this show. <laughs> I love that, Zoe. Thank you. And thank You're you welcome. so much for, for sharing your passion with me and, you know, and with the community and with all of our listeners. Uh, it's been a pleasure. And I know I'll be seeing a lot more of you. And I'm excited about that as we bond through, uh, through UMFS. So thank you. Yes. And I, it was a pleasure to be here. I'm so happy to be able to be here with you. Um, I'm looking forward to doing more. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see how your season continu- continues to blossom. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Well, this is Fredericksburg Mission with Angela Rivers. Of course, if you'd like to learn more about becoming a foster parent, please visit www.umfs.org slash foster. We'll see you next time. Thank you for joining us. I'm Angela Rivers with Fredericksburg Mission. Tune in at Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or anywhere you listen to your podcast. Join us again next week for our next episode. How do you shorten the time it takes to buy a car? Car buying just got easier. Pohanka365.com lets you complete as much or as little of the car buying process online. Pohanka365.com. Car buying simplified. Anytime, anywhere.